What's up, everybody? So today we're going to do a problem where we're going to take a linked list and we're going to print the nodes of that list in reverse order. So let's go ahead and look at an example. And this is a pretty straightforward problem where, you know, we maybe have a list like this where we have one, two, three, and then we just want to print the nodes in reverse order in some sort of you know, maybe we would want to print the nodes like three, two, one instead, but we're going to print out the nodes one after another in reverse order. So let's go ahead and get right into the question. And the first thing that we want to do is ask a couple questions of our interviewer. And the biggest question that we might find useful here is to ask, what is the length of this linked list potentially going to be? Is it going to be a really long list or is it going to be a pretty short list? Or is it, could it be any, literally any possible length? And the reason for this is that it may affect our solution. And this is going to be similar to a problem that we did earlier this week where we were looking at the uh, longest common substring in between two strings where it actually matters whether the string is or in this case the list is really long or not because we're going to be storing some data and we it's going to affect what solution we choose basically so it's a good question to ask and your interviewer might not give you any definitive answer in which case you can just discuss what the trade-offs are but it, maybe they have something specific in mind so it's good to ask and the other things that we should check with them are just are the values in the list integers strings cars something else doesn't really matter for our purposes but it's good to ask and also just double check what the format of the output is because maybe they do want obviously in this case i just printed each on its own separate line and that's what i'm planning on doing but maybe they have something more particular in mind for how you should output your results. So good things to ask. Now that we've clarified those, let's get on to discussing how we could solve this problem. And when I look at this problem, I really see two possible solutions and there are trade-offs to both. So the first is that we have this linked list, one, two, three, like this, and we could just reverse the linked list, right? We could just go through and reverse each pointer and then print out the list. And that's a pretty straightforward way to do it. But, and we can, maybe we should talk about what the advantages and disadvantages are of that. So a big advantage is that it, well, let's actually talk about the other solution first and then we can talk about compare the two. So the other option is that we have this linked list here and we can recursively print out each element in the list. So we basically would call the, we would call print reverse list of one, two, three. And then within that, we would call print reverse list of two, three. So like this. And then we would call within that print reverse list of three. And finally, print reverse list of null. And then at the after each recursion, you're going to print where we would print out the node at the front of the list, right? So in this case, we print out nothing, then we print out three, then we print out two, then we print out one as we go back up our recursive stack. So that's the other way that we could do it. And let's talk about what the differences are in these two approaches and maybe pick one that's a better approach or whatever approach we think is better in this context. So a big advantage of, so the one, our two options are reverse linked list or recursive. And we have, there are advantages and disadvantages to both, right? So the advantage, one advantage of reversing the linked list is that it doesn't take any additional space or it doesn't take any stack space, which is something that we know in the recursion, it's going to take up stack space. And unfortunately, we can't optimize this because we have to do the recursive call first and then return back and print out the value. We can't preemptively print out the value and efficiently go not have to store, I guess that's tail recursion. So we can't use tail recursion here and that's going to make it less efficient. 
and because we're going to have to store all of the stacks for each subroutine. And another advantage of the reversing the reversing strategy is that doing recursion could be slower because we're having to do all of these function calls. And there may be other benefits too, but there are some disadvantages. Like we're gonna have to go do multiple passes over our list, right? Because first we're gonna have to do one pass where we reverse it. And then we're gonna have to do another pass in the new direction and print everything out. So we're gonna end up having to do, it's still the same big O of N time, but it's gonna be, but from a practical standpoint, it's gonna be half, the, it's gonna be twice as slow as it would have been if we were just doing one pass. And another thing that we might need to do is to make a copy of our original list because by doing this, we're modifying the list. So we might need to actually copy the original list if we don't want to modify the original list or alternatively we could write a routine that would then go and reverse the list back afterwards but that's not really a good way to do it if we can help it so the advantages of the recursive strategy are basically the opposite right is that we don't have to modify the list in any way i also think that it's maybe slightly simpler code and I kind of like the recursive solution better because I just think it's a, it's a neat solution, honestly. And it's going to be a little bit faster, maybe, because we're not going through, we're not doing the multiple passes. So it, but it's really going to depend on a lot of factors. So for all practical purposes, these are both going to be pretty fast algorithms because they're both going to take O of N time and it's going to vary in terms of how much space they take up and sort of what additional things you have to do. So I'm going to implement the recursive solution here, even though it may be slightly slower, but you could do whichever solution you think is better. And as long as you discuss what the pros and cons of are each one, then it really doesn't matter that much which solution you choose. And you can explain that you're thinking of these two different solutions. So let's go ahead and actually implement this. So what we need to do is we're going to obviously have our private node class. And that's just going to, in this case, I'm going to just use, I'm using integer values. So int value and node next, like that. And then all we have to do is cre create this recursive function and go through and then print them in reverse order. So we're going to say public void because we're just printing out and I'm going to call it print reversed list and it's going to take in a node n and so initially we're going to call this with our entire list and then on each recursive call we're going to go to the next node so our base case which is the first which is where we're going to terminate our recursion and i particularly like doing the base case first so that we know that our recursion is going to terminate in this case our base case is when the node is going to be null because we're eventually going to get to the end of the list where the node is null so if n equals null, then we're just going to return because we're not going to obviously print anything if the node is null. And then otherwise, we're going to call print reversed list on n.next. And then once that returns, we're going to do system.out.print ln of n.value. And as you can see, this is going to work because what we're doing is we're going to recall, we're going to recursively call until we get to null and then we're going to return back and print each value. So we're going to return back the, from let's say that we get to the end of the list, we're going to get to three, we're going to return back to where n is equal to three and then print the value. And then we're going to return back to n equals two, print that value and return back to n equals one. So let's actually test this. And we'll just use this example here. So let me just say we're going to start with n equals 1. And we're going to say n is not equal to null. So we're going to come down here and we're going to call this with n.next. So n equals 2. And again, n is not equal to null. So we call it with n equals 3. n is still not null. So we call it with n equals null. And now n is null. So we return and we pop this off the stack. And then we come down to here and we see we print the value. So we print 
and end dot value, which is three, and then we return and pop it off the stack. So we're going to print end dot value, which is two, and we're going to pop that off the stack. And finally, we're going to print end dot value, which is one, and pop that off the stack, and then we're done. So as you can see, this is actually a super simple solution to the problem, which is part of why I like this better than reversing the linked list. But that's also a really good solution, and they're both they both take O of n time because they both go through every node exactly once or go through every node a factor of one times, basically. So that's all there is to this problem. Hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or on the blog, and I will see you again soon.